In general, your iPhone is configured to work perfectly well right out of the box. But like any technology, there are settings that you can tweak and change that will improve your overall experience. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 settings that I think every iPhone owner should consider changing or at least be aware of to ensure that you're getting the best possible experience and maintaining your own privacy. Okay, let's get into it. iCloud Keychain is excellent for a number of reasons. It allows you to store things like your usernames and passwords for all of the websites that you visit securely in the cloud, making them accessible to you when you go to log into something. Also, I hope you already know this, but in case you don't, don't use obvious passwords on websites, and by obvious, I mean words or basic strings of numbers, and don't use the same password more than once. If you do, a hacker could gain access to one of your accounts, then use that same information to gain access to others. A complex password should be a combination of both upper and lowercase letters, numbers and special characters, and shouldn't be a combination that makes any sense, it should be as random as possible. The issue with that, of course, is it's impossible to remember one, never mind hundreds of passwords like this, and this is why Keychain is so useful. To switch it on, head to Settings, then tap on your name, then iCloud. Ensure the keychain is switched on. Keychain can not only store things like your usernames and passwords, it can also store things like your credit card details and your Wi-Fi passwords, and it does so using end-to-end -end encryption. The function can only be accessed with an unlocked iPhone, and it will usually verify once more that it's you prior to you being able to select a password. My iPhone 13 Pro, for example, will allow me to select a password, but only once I've verified myself using Face ID. On my MacBook Pro, Touch ID does the same thing, which is another great feature of Keychain. It works across all of your Apple devices. If you're anything like me, the sight of a phone number that you don't recognize calling you fills you with utter dread. Many of us just prefer to receive a text or an email from someone rather than take a call. I do quite often answer my phone when it's an unknown number, but over the past year or two, I've honestly found that nine out of 10 of these calls are clearly scams. So your iPhone has a function to help you deal with this. Head into settings, then phone, then silence unknown callers and toggle it on. Any numbers that you don't recognize will ring as normal at their end, but will come through silently at your end before being sent to voicemail. You'll get a notification of the missed call and the call will show on the recents list. Calls from people in your contacts list or people who aren't contacts but who you've recently called out to or Siri suggestions will still come through as normal. So this does have a good chance of being effective and only targeting those calls with a high likelihood of being spam. A handy tool for anyone who finds calls like this a nuisance. Your iPhone is thankfully pretty good at keeping your data safe and secure, especially if you're using biometrics like Touch or Face ID. But there is a chance that you could lose your phone, and there is then a chance that a crafty thief could access your phone using your six-digit passcode. If you're really concerned about the prospect of this happening, one slightly extreme solution is to enable Erase Data Automatically. To do this, head to Settings, then Face ID and Passcode. Input your passcode to access this menu, then scroll all the way to the bottom and toggle on Erase Data. With this switched on, if the phone detects 10 failed attempts to input your passcode in a row, it will automatically self-destruct. Well, it will erase all of the data on it. This is of course handy if your phone gets into the hands of a thief, but do keep in mind your phone can't tell the difference between a thief and a toddler, so if you're someone who regularly lets your kids play with your phone, you might not want to switch this setting on. When developers create iPhone apps, they can request the ability to track you across other apps and websites outside of the app that they've created, the one that you installed. A real-world example of this would be Facebook. If granted the relevant permissions, Facebook can track you once you leave the Facebook app, learning about things like your buying habits, which in turn helps them to ensure that they're targeting adverts at you correctly. If you work in marketing, this is a really good thing. If you don't work in marketing, I would argue that this is a really bad thing and something that you may want to switch off. Apple in recent years have gone to great lengths to ensure that app developers request permission for this access, they don't just get it by default, and that they're transparent about what data they collect about you and how they use it. Facebook hate this feature by the way. 
but the notification for allowing access pops up in a way that I reckon a lot of people will simply agree to without thinking about it. So I would encourage you to check out what apps you've given tracking permission to and consider revoking it. To do it, head to settings, then privacy, then tracking. Down here, I can see all the apps that have permission to track me outside of their apps. This is honestly news to me. I didn't realize that I'd granted these apps permission. So whilst making this video, I've actually revoked permission from HP Smart, Just Eat and Untapped. If you like, you can switch off requests to track. This means that moving forward, all requests by apps will automatically be denied. This is probably a smart thing to switch off, although I actually quite like knowing which apps are trying to track me and would prefer to see the permission request come through and then make a decision about it for each app. Sticking with the privacy theme, it's worth taking a moment on the same screen we were just on, settings and then privacy, to find out how much of your personal data you're allowing to be tracked by different apps. If you scroll down this list, everything shown here can theoretically be accessed by an app, provided the app requests permission and provided you grant it. A checkup every now and then of how much access you're granting is not a bad idea. For example, contacts. I'm allowing WhatsApp to access my contacts, but not TikTok. Microphone is interesting. You can see here Starling, my banking app. I know that this needed access to the microphone back when I first set this phone up with them because they require you to send them a quick video of you confirming who you are. But it's a banking app, so day to day, no thank you. I'll be revoking that access right away. Photos is a big one, and remember, just because an app wants access to your photos, you don't have to allow access to everything. Eufy Security, for example, has no reason to view my photos, only to create new images when I download files from Eufy, so I think I might change that from all photos to add photos only. Take a look through and see if there's anything in there that you're not sure about. If in doubt, switch it off and see if it impacts your ability to use the app. You can always grant access again if you need to. 5G is great. If you've got a phone that supports it, it gives you blisteringly fast access to mobile internet when it's available. But it can be a bit of a battery drain, and you might find that for the most part, you're perfectly happy sticking with the much more readily available 4G, which is less battery intensive. To change this setting, head to settings, then mobile data, yours might say cellular, then mobile data options, yours might say cellular options. Head into voice and data, and you can choose between 5G on, 5G auto, or 4G. 4G will restrict this phone to 4G only. 5G on will always use 5G when it's available, which may reduce the battery life of your device. 5G auto will only use 5G when it won't significantly reduce the battery life of your device, so that's the option that I've gone for. A major change that Apple implemented a couple of operating systems ago was to stop incoming call alerts from interrupting what you were doing. Now, if someone calls you, the call alert appears as a banner, which makes them much less obnoxious. This, in my opinion, is great. It's much less obnoxious, but for some people, it can make it more difficult to easily answer a call. I prefer it this way, but you might not. You might like the old style of full screen call alerts. If that's the case, head to settings, then phone, then incoming calls, and change this option from banner to full screen. The old, interrupting style of call alerts will be back. Face masks are part of everyday life now, and even though society is asking us to wear them less these days, chances are there will still be occasions in the future where you have to wear one. Face masks unfortunately play havoc with facial recognition systems, but your iPhone does have a backup, your Apple Watch. If you have an Apple Watch, you can head to settings, then face ID and passcode on your iPhone and switch unlock with Apple Watch on. Provided you're wearing your unlocked, passcode protected Apple Watch, you don't need to use face ID to unlock your phone, the watch will do meaning that if you're in a store wearing a mask and you need to check something on your phone, no more pulling your mask down to use Face ID. This does only work with unlocking your phone though, not with apps that use Face ID, which is kind of a shame. Focus mode is relatively new to the iPhone, but it's a great way to quickly set yourself to work mode and you can control how your phone should behave while you've got this set up. To do this, head to settings, then focus. 
You can see that you've got a few already set up, but you can add more custom ones if you like using the plus in the upper right corner. If I tap on work, I can decide that in general, I don't want people to be able to contact me or apps to be able to notify me while this is switched on, allowing me to focus, but I can use these options here to set exceptions to that rule. So I can say that the people added in this list, my closest friends and family, my fiance for example, they can override focus mode and I'll get notified of messages from them. In apps, I can decide which apps should be able to notify me while I'm working. So maybe you're way too easily distracted by WhatsApp or Instagram alerts when you're trying to work. Make sure they're not included here. You can share your focus status. This is really only useful if you use the Messages app, which isn't very popular here in the UK, unfortunately, but it would let someone know that you're working when they message you, so not to expect a quick reply. You can hide notification badges when this focus mode is switched on if you wish. You can even create a specific home screen page to show in this mode if you like, maybe making a distraction-free page. And you can automate this coming on or off. So if you know it should come on Monday to Friday, nine to five for example, you can set that option. You can also have one of these options for when you're sleeping and a general do not disturb, which is what I use when I'm filming YouTube videos. If you have an iPhone 12 or 13 Pro, your phone can record in Dolby Vision HDR, which looks pretty awesome when you're viewing it back on a compatible device, but not all devices and apps support it, meaning the footage can look a bit off on certain devices, so you may wish to switch this setting off. To do this, head to Settings, then Camera, then Record Video. Down here, you have the option to switch HDR on or off. So there you go, 10 settings to consider changing on your iPhone to help you get more out of it. What about you? What settings do you always change on your iPhone? Any that I've missed? Drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.